10 car salesmen and a finance officer share the inside scoop on the car business. Are there good people in the car business? If you've been mistreated on one deal after another, it's pretty easy to say no. However, the answer is that there are enough good guys in the car business that it gives me hope for the industry. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, also known as the Homer Guy and author of Is That the Best You Can Do? This amazing video brought to you by YouTube's best channel on car buying and selling, courtesy of the Homework Guy team and our super high intensity training program for car buyers. If you decide you like what you learn here and want to get one of these awesome shirts or hoodies, well, just check the merch links down below and suit yourself up. There is so much great feedback that we get from people in the car business. It gives me hope and it should give you hope too that the car business actually has a chance to improve. Here are 18 comments that help you understand the value of what you learn here on the Homework Guy channel and some insider tricks from people who know. This feedback not only validates everything we teach you here on the Homework Guy channel, but tons of great advice on things you may not have known about. Here we go with 10 salesmen, a finance officer, an insurance agent, and six customers who saved big using the knowledge and techniques taught here on the channel. Ed Steyer says, I sold cars for years. I loved it when someone would say, just looking, usually meant they were going home in a new car. But Kevin is spot on. Thanks, Ed, for that. It points out the fact that when you just show up at a car lot and say, just looking, you're likely going to get taken advantage of. And that's actually one of the first things people who haven't done their homework, that's what they say. J Bone writes, this is all true, unfortunately. I worked as a F&I manager. That's the finance officer, for those of you who didn't know, for a few years. And boy, let me tell you, you should be a fly on the wall when you're out of earshot. The racist comments, the locker room talk, the high five when you get paid and raise your payment $300 a month. Don't ever fall for the sliding rate scale if you buy warranty and insurances and vehicle protection packs. Now, I'm not saying that stuff is not a value to some, but it has nothing to do with interest rate. Great advice from the finance manager. Ed Pavlik writes, outstanding video. Thank you, Kevin. Seriously, one of the most informative and helpful videos. And I have many years experience with automotive dealerships and manufacturers. Thanks, Ed, for that. Judo writes, Kevin, my nephew was a car dealer. He started before graduation from high school and did it until the age of 55. He was making $130,000 a year when I was making $15 an hour. He told me the same thing you said on your video and a whole lot more. Don't pay for the extra dealer fees, the paint sealer, etc. I would buy his lunch to go with me to buy a vehicle. He would not sell me a car from the dealership he worked for at least 100 miles from his work. I asked him why. Because I would get fired was his reply. He showed me about the markup on the vehicles, how much they're making after the handshake. Sonny was a true Wheeler dealer. He saved me thousands of dollars. He once made the comment, car salesmen lie so much they don't know the truth from reality. So true. Sonny would never buy a new car. Never. It was always a used vehicle. Always puzzled me. Only an idiot would take the hit up front, he would tell relatives. Thanks again, Kevin, for your video. It brings back a lot of memories from my nephew. Dead on stuff, guys. Michael Carpenter writes, I used to love how, as a new salesman, the managers wouldn't tell me about any of this stuff. Get them to sign. That's all they cared about, of course. It was just a gray area. The great abyss. Crazy. Michael hits the nail on the head here. The newer car salesmen that you're running into on the lot, they don't have any clue how far their dealership is going to go to screw you. Jarrett writes, I work at a Chevy dealership as a sales guy right now, and I must say this is completely accurate. Kevin missed the part where dealers actually get a percentage of the borrowing costs from the banks, kind of like a referral fee. That's exactly right. They earn additional money for every half point or point they mark up in interest rate on the bank. Our dealership charges the $599 documentation fee, and it drives me crazy. There's not a dealer in my area that doesn't, though, sadly. Very true. But listen, here's Jarrett talking about the $599 documentation fee. And he, like many people in the car business, know that it's pure nonsense. Don't pay this. Hugh Barton writes, as always, Kevin, a nice clear presentation. Before I retired, I managed a 50 unit per month Saab dealership with a small part of the ginormous used car dealer. At that time, Saab had extremely aggressive rates on both loans and leases, which were of course well publicized and my highly educated and solidly affluent guests were on point too. So after the 10th of a deal on a busy Saturday, almost went to a death in the finance office, we had had enough. Me and my number two, an experienced pro, grabbed the business manager by his nasty 
lapels and told him that my team would handle everything. Appraisals, F&I, the whole deal. You are not permitted to bother my guests. There was pushback, but I was confident they were happier to deal with me than angry attorneys or pro athletes. Between rebates, unit incentives, etc., we would protect fair pricing from my dealership and my team. If I can't figure out how to make enough money through all the legitimate products, they should fire me now. P.S. Never got fired. If you're a first timer on the Homework Guy channel, consider subscribing and leaving us a comment below. Add hashtag the Homework Guy if you'd like a response directly from Kevin or one of the Homework Guy staff members. We're always glad to help our loyal followers, and the best part is, there's no charge. You can also email the team at infothehomeworkguy.com with a specific question, or if you'd like a free contract review, just black out your personal information and send it to us. We'd love to hear from you. Just be aware that we do get a lot of requests, so just be patient while you wait for a response. Back to you, Kevin. Moving on to Charlie T. He writes, I've bought a few cars in my day and having worked on the inside, I sold a hell of a lot more. My advice to anybody is simple. Do your homework. Know what you're willing to pay. Be willing to walk. Never ever allow emotion to factor into the purchase. Keep in mind that the car you want really isn't special even if it is. Yeah, some of us love our vehicles. I can't fault anyone when it comes to that. I love them. But even when it comes to special vehicles, I always keep in mind the benefits of doing my homework, getting my price, willingness to walk away, keeping emotion out of the deal. And that damn near any vehicle I may be interested in most likely is not the only one in the world like it. So true. While it is true you don't really want to discuss how you intend to purchase the car, it is important to convey that you are a buyer and not a looker. Make it clear that if a deal can be struck, you are willing to purchase the car today. That always provides the buyer a bit of leverage. Sales staff, and especially sales managers, simply hate to see a buyer walk out the door and off the lot. They know there is little chance of getting the buyer back. There is far more lookers than there are buyers and plenty of competition for those buyers. On the off chance this tactic doesn't work with a particular dealer, know that it still benefits you because you probably wouldn't want to do business with that dealership anyway. Some dealers are far more interested in fleecing a customer than providing service to their customer. That will hold true throughout the organization. If it exists in the sales department, then it will prevail in finance, aftermarket, parts and service. Those at the top of the dealership determine how the business will operate and whatever the policies are, what practice practices occur and why come right from the top. If the upper management is all about exploiting the buyer, then you can bet when it comes to getting your purchase serviced or repaired, you'll be exploited there as well. That is 100% true. Finally, keep this in mind. It is your money that is most important. Dealers want your money. They want to take as much of your money as they can. If they can't get a lot of it, many will sell for what they can get. A car on their lot costs them money. It has to go. The question is how much it will ultimately go for, and that is very much up to the buyer. Thanks, Charlie T, for all that. That was some awesome advice. Brent writes, uh, this doesn't make sense. As a salesman, I need to know what the customer is paying. There are certain incentives for financing and other incentives for cash buying new cars. If I'm building a deal for a customer, I need to apply the cash discount if they're paying cash. Sometimes this discount can be as much as $5,000 from the manufacturer. The salesperson generally doesn't care how much the customer is paying as we get paid on the gross profit of the vehicle. 25% of the gross vehicle profit at any dealership. I generally don't care what happens in the business office because I don't make money in there. The finance manager hate cash deals, but once the customer is in there and the cash pricing is set, as long as they say no to everything, they'll pay the exact amount I quoted them. Well, here's where Brent is wrong. He mentions in here that the finance managers hate cash. That is exactly right. And in many dealerships, maybe not where Brent works at, but in many dealerships, when the customer says they're paying cash, that shuts down a lot of the negotiation on pricing because they know the finance officer is going to have a much harder time taking advantage of you after you negotiated the price of the car. Mark Morrison is from an insurance company. He says, you can buy Gap from your insurance company for $17 to $25 annually from most carriers. I'm an agent. We sell it all the time if told of the purchase ahead of time. Once you sign the contract and stuck for $1,000, bucks, you are stuck. Call your agent before you buy. There you go, you guys. $17 to $25 a year for Gap insurance from an insurance agent. C. McKinney writes, Hubby and I went to the dealership for a new car. After many hours, a salesman let us drive the car home and return it back to the dealership the next day to complete the deal. The car was beautiful, but I convinced Hubby we really didn't need a new car. We returned the car the next day and the salesman was furious. I mean, totally unhinged. His reaction simply cemented our decision. Wow, what a horrible experience. Not sure if the salesman's behavior was an act or what. That was a few years ago. We are still driving the same car, which is in excellent condition. No need to change. You know, like a lot 
lot of car buyers go to car lots just thinking they need a new car. In the case of C. McKinney, obviously she did not. Well, there's many people in this situation. Think about that when you're tempted to go to a car dealership. Do you really need a car? Well, in this case, years later, she's driving the same vehicle, still in excellent condition. Douglas Moran writes, a few years ago, I was interested in buying a new Honda. The dealer had etched the vehicle and wanted me to pay $399. Yeah, this is garbage. This was not disclosed until my visit to the F&I office. For a variety of reasons, including the $399 etch cam, I walked out of the dealership before the salesperson had a chance to intervene. When I got home, the sales manager called and asked why I had walked away. He assured me the etch fee would be removed. No other dealer fake fees would be charged. I would not have paid them regardless, and the financing would be lower than the rate I had gotten from my credit union. He threw in a few free oil changes. I returned and bought the Honda. If you have reached a deal and encountered the etch scam or any other dealer scam, your best move is to walk away. No dealer is often going to let a firm deal disappear over a fake fee. If, on the other hand, the dealer will not change its offer, you have likely reached the dealer's best offer. In that case, the decision is yours. Take the deal or look elsewhere. In my opinion, look elsewhere. Somebody who needs to force a window etch scam down your throat is not a dealership worth doing business with. Thanks, Douglas, for that comment. Liliana writes, I went to the bank like you advised in one of your other videos. They said I was approved for 15000 at 2% for three years. I was so excited until I went to check out a car I was interested in, and they said if I planned to use my own bank to finance, there was going to be a $1,000 fee for not financing with them. Is this even legal? I was so upset, I just walked out. Thank you for your videos. I'm trying to buy my first car. They are extremely helpful. Liliana, this finance man was full of garbage. You are right to walk out, as I noted here. Pure nonsense. Nobody should accept this. Thousand dollar fee for using your own bank? Get out of here. Phil writes, I just bought a used car using these tactics and I couldn't believe how accurate this video is. Saved $2,800 using this video. Now, after being 30 years old, I'm just learning how to negotiate with dealers. Thank you, Kevin. Phil, thanks for your comment. And glad to hear $2,800. People can save that kind of money using our advice on car deals over and over and over again. Roderick writes, end up canceling a service contract for $3,400. This is what was said. There's no way we could get an approval if we didn't put it in there. Or in order to get the better rate, we included the service contract. Both of those are pure nonsense. And then Roderick did the right thing, went back and canceled the contract, got his $3,400 back. Or if you financed it and rolled into financing, they just took it off the end of your car deal. But $3,400 canceled. Excellent work, Roderick. Last comment here is from Chris. Brilliant genius. This is just the reason I eagerly await every video. Solid gold. Hashtag the homework guy. For any of you good guys in the car business, salesmen, finance officers, dealer owners, wholesalers, people just like the ones who commented here today. If you want to contribute to future video content here on the channel, feel free to email us at info at the and put salesman who wants to help in the title of the email or whatever your job title might be. Just put that in the title of the email followed by wants to help. You'll hear from us just like the many others who help us and you can be part of solving the problem in the car business. Did you appreciate the video today? If so, consider giving us a thumbs up and leave a comment down below. Include hashtag the homework guy. Share the video on social media with your friends and family and make sure to join us on Facebook and Twitter too. We post notifications and other updates on our other social media sites and answer car buyer questions there too. If you love what we do and want to say thanks with a tip, PayPal and the Cash App links that you're seeing here will be easy to find in that description box down below. The Homework Guide team has helped millions of car buyers with videos, free contract reviews, market updates, and much more, and we'll always have your back with more great content. At your request, we're going to take a deeper dive into Kelly Blue Book to help you better understand exactly how to use some of the information there to your advantage. That's coming up here soon. Thanks, everyone, for coming back. You guys rock. I'm Kevin Hunter. Until next time, take care.